Hello and welcome to another Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to take a look at the Hike Vision 2 wire intercom solution. This solution has been designed to allow installers and end users to upgrade their existing uh, legacy intercom systems with a more up to date system but still use two wire cable infrastructure. So these devices basically run off a two wire connection. As you can see here on the back, the connection for the outdoor station. The units that you see here, you'll notice straight away, look almost identical to the equivalent IP modular Hikvision system. The only main difference being the two wire connection on the rear here and also connection on the rear of the indoor station here. The two wire connections run back to this particular unit here, which is a DSKD706 controller. And this particular unit not only supplies power and video, but it also creates the the calling handshake as well between the devices so everything is handled through a single two-wire connection which is non-polarized as well so there's no need to worry about any kind of positive and negative connections as, as well from this particular device so this is the outdoor station it's a modular unit its modern number is a DSKD 8003-IME2 it's got a 2 megapixel 180 degree field of view camera on the front single call button, two lock controls and it's also got a RS-45 connection and also some alarm inputs, four alarm inputs on the rear as well. This particular unit is a DSKH6320-WTE2 which is the indoor station, it's a 7 inch 1024 by 600 touchscreen unit. You've got your two wire connection inside there and there's also various uh, alarm inputs and RS-45 connections using this interface as well on the rear. This is the controller unit. Like I said earlier, the units do wire back to this particular device. It's capable of connecting to up to six devices through these connections here. Those devices can either be six indoor stations or five indoor stations and a, a single outdoor. The outdoor station does need to be connected to connection channel number six, which has the higher power rating, which this particular outdoor station requires and then five other connections there which are suitable for the indoor stations. There's also an in and out connection on the top left hand corner as well. This allows the controllers to be daisy chained. You can connect up to 500 devices within a two wire system and that's done by daisy chaining the actual controllers and creating a backbone as such. So through the in and out allows you to connect additional six devices per hop if you like in the backbone, something that we'll look at later in this video. So you can have up to six backbones within an actual building so six rows of equipment connected back to the main point of connection within the actual establishment this is done using these particular devices here and this KD706 has a network connection as well so on a single backbone that can be connected straight up to the network on multiple backbones you can either connect each of the LAN ports on your DSKD706 to a switch a network switch and link them up using Ethernet if the legacy wiring system dictates that you have to use two wire, then there is an actual additional controller model that allows you to still utilize the two wire cable infrastructure for linking backbones. And that is a DSKAD706S, looks almost identical, but it is designed only to have DSKAD706s or additional KAD706Ss connected to it. That's this particular device here. This also has a network connection on it as well. So when the backbones are linked, you've still got the ability to connect this up to the network, which allows you to connect your intercom to backend VMS, NVRs, and also mobile phone connectivity. So the two actual controllers can be seen here. Like I said earlier, they are almost identical. The DSKD706 being for connecting indoor and outdoor stations, powering them and linking them, and the DSKD706S being for connecting multiple backbones, buildings, and cannot be connected to indoor or outdoor stations. So that's something to bear in mind when you're planning your system. Obviously the difference between the two controllers. So as I said earlier, this particular unit does look identical to the IP modular system and it does actually utilize the same accessories and also enclosures that the modular IP system uses. So that makes life a little bit easier when you're planning your outdoor topology, if you like. The same accessories apply to the two-wire system that it does to the IP. So the only difference being this particular unit, which is the main outdoor unit. So looking at the sheet here, these are your typical sort of IP modules, each one having a different function. The DSKDKP keypad, the DSKDKK name tag module. 
the Cardri, the DSKDM, we you'll always be familiar with for the IP system, but are also utilized within the actual two-wire system as well. So again, you get all the advantages of the IP system. You get the, the network functionality, you get the same modules, you get the same enclosures as well. So you get the surface mount and the flush mount enclosures still apply. So you can build your system with the same enclosures, flush mount and surface mount, and also the same modules. But the, the main selling point of the system is to utilize the existing legacy two-wire cable, but have a full system update as well. So this is a typical example here of a, a unit that's uh, been designed. It's a main module and a two module accessory. So it's using a DSKD ACW3 enclosure and it's also got the DSKD KP uh, keypad and also the DSKD M card reader as well built into it. And I, you, you can see there that the units connect the same as the IP system to an RS-45 port on the rear. So a small cable in between each one and behind this particular pad here is a, an RS-45 binary address setting as well which each unit is set individually to. This particular device is the PSU, powers the controller, connects to this particular connection here which is a 24 volt DC input. This is the DSKAW60-2N. It's got a DIN rail connection on the back. It's designed really to be installed inside electrical consumer units or inside electrical safe enclosures. The actual mains connections are just at the bottom here so not a lot of electrical protection around them so I would recommend that these are, are actually installed within the consumer unit or within an electrically safe enclosure but this is another accessory that you would need to complete the actual topology if you like. So we can see here an actual example of a system, a very basic system which is the two wire outdoor station connecting to the DSKD 706. You've also got your indoor station network switch for network integration and then also your back end connectivity. So an NVR DVR streaming, uh, 4200 VMS streaming. You've also got IP streaming in the other direction. So this can actually be added to the indoor station as additional camera, additional viewing angle if you like of the entrance way if necessary. And you've also got the HitConnect mobile functionality, which we'll look at later in this video. So at this point, I'm going to recreate this simple topology using these units on my desk here, which I'm going to do now. So now my IVMS 4200, which is how we're going to set our two wire devices up today. It is possible to use the local GUI of the indoor station to set a basic topology up through the wizard. But today we're going to use IVMS 4200 to do this. First thing you'll notice there is that the, the two devices, the indoor and the outdoor station, have both been added to the VMS and they've both been given an individual IP address. So they are seen as two different devices on the network. So even though we had our network cable connected to the DSKD706 controller earlier, it's actually the indoor and the outdoor station that are seen as network devices. The only difference is the two wire cable infrastructure that connects those units up. So here we've got both our units there visible, they've both been given IP addresses and they're both obviously active on the network. Initially you will need to obviously add them and activate them yourself, you can do that from the online device tab there. So the first thing we'll do is have a look at the outdoor station settings, and there's various options here on left hand side, we're going to take a look at some of these today. The time setting there allows us to set the actual time and date up of the unit, we can set our time zone, we can enable NTP and DST and we can also synchronise the time with our uh, PC, save that. There's a system maintenance setting there which we're, where we can reboot default and also import export our settings. It's also possible to upgrade the firmware from here. Under the intercom tab we've got our ID which allows us to set our floor building community numbers up. We can also set the unit from a main station to a substation by changing the zero to a, a number above that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's up to eight sub door stations allowed in the two wire topology. But we leave it as a main today. There's some time parameters here, max speaking duration and that is the time that you can actually speak to the person you've called from outside once they answer and there's also a message duration here which is the maximum message duration that you can leave if nobody answers the call and we'll set that to 30 seconds as well there. You can set a permission password on the outdoor station so if you've got one of the keypad units you can actually gain access through the password yourself. It's a minimum six digit code which we'll add here. And I can demo that later on. There's up to three there allowed. Okay, so that's saved. We've got some volume settings there for listening and speaking from the actual unit. They're all set to seven out of the actual box. I've also got a motion detection setting as well here, which is handy as if you want to monitor people approaching the outdoor station. You can do that through the motion detection setting here. 
We can also view what sub-modules we've got connected to the unit as well. I've got a card reader and a keypad module connected to my outdoor station, which we'll see later on in this video. But one last thing I just want to quick look at is the I.O. input output set. We can change the four alarm outputs status. Alarm output one is set to door status, which is a door status alarm, which some certain locks on the market will have, and it alerts you if the door doesn't close or is abnormally opened. And alarm three and four is set as a door switch, which is basically where you would connect your push exit buttons to on the other side of the door for a quick means of being able to open the door and leave the, the premises as such. So we'll close that one down. And we'll go over to the indoor station and quickly bring the... So we can do the same with the indoor station. We can set up the the time zone to Greenwich Mean Time. We can also turn on the NTP and we can synchronise our time as well and do that. We've got the same maintenance screen there which allows us to import, export and carry out firmware upgrades into intercom time parameters same menu but different settings inside we've got max ring duration which is the amount of times that the indoor station will actually make a soundable ring when it's called and there's a max live view duration which if you choose any of the cameras obviously the main outdoor station camera or any additional cameras you might have added to the indoor station then that's the max live view duration there which again you can be changed from this menu call forwarding time which is set to zero out the box that's the delay and it waits before it actually rings your mobile device. So if you're using the uh, intercom on a, through Hit Connect, then you can set a delay before it actually calls the phone. And I'm going to set that today to 10 seconds. So I can also demonstrate that later on. That's your time parameters there. There's also a permission password here for your admin password. There's also an unlocking password as well, which you can add that the indoor station holds as well from this menu here. And we've got the same volume settings all set to seven from the indoor again you've got to be able to speak and listen from the indoor station as well in order for us to set the two units together to work we need to go down to the actual network options at the bottom and there's a tab called link network configuration this allows us to link the indoor to an outdoor station which can be done here through the main door station ip address so if we look at our two wire outdoor we can see it's set to 192.168.200.48 so if we put that in here and save that then that should link the the outdoor to the indoor station as such there's also an id configuration here which tells us the actual room number and the floor number as well this number can be used again if you're using the keypad you can call the actual indoor station directly from the keypad from the room number there as well there's also some calling linkage settings here which allow you to utilize the alarm outputs on the indoor station to trigger when a call comes in that can be handy for any kind of third party devices you might have to enhance this notification levels a siren or a, a flashing light if you were visually impaired or had hard of hearing then they can be utilized when a call comes in as well so that's the two units basically talking to each other one thing that we can also do from the ivms 4200 is add a person and send that person with the, the authority level into the outdoor station which we can do by using the person tab here that's available from the little module mosaic at the bottom. I've already created a, an establishment there, Dynamic CCTV, and I can add a user. So by bringing that up, I'm the first user, so my ID is 1. So I can give myself a name. I can upload a picture of myself if need be. I can put my email address in. And uh, various other bits of information. We can add a card and a fingerprint, depending on what terminals we're using today. We, we do have the card reader module, so I'm going to add a card on the unit. This particular pop-up box here allows you to set what type of card you want to add. A duress card, patrol card, dismiss card. We're going to just put a normal card in today. You can actually choose through the settings tab how you want to read that card into the system. You can use a, an actual external card reader like our card reader on our actual unit as such. Or we can use an enrolment card reader which would connect directly to the PC by clicking on the local option there. We can select our model of enrolment unit there and also various other settings. But we're going to add this in using our actual outdoor station card reader as such. So if I click on the actual read icon there, it's ready to receive my card, which I'm quickly going to do now. So you can see the card number has come in, so if I quickly add that, there's our card. Now one thing that is important to add at the bottom when you're adding a user is the residential information. You need to bind it to an indoor station, so the system knows where that person belongs, what a room number, what indoor station, so we can do that there. And we can also put in the actual parameters of that particular indoor, the floor number, which we know is 1 from the ID, and also the call or room number, which we also know is 1 as well. So if we set those settings there and add the person, there I am, they have appeared. So we can now, once we've got the person added, we can now send this information over to the outdoor station. If we click on the access control tab and we can add an authentication. I'll just get rid of my old one there. 
Yep, so we can add a new authentication which allows us basically to select a user from the list on the top and I've only got one person added to Dynamics CCTV at the moment but you can have as many users there as, as needed so if I send myself over I can then choose doors that I want to grant myself access to there's various options there but obviously we want to concentrate on the two wire outdoor unit there so if I send that across and save it give myself a name there test save that we've now got the actual the template ready to go the template authorization template ready to go so what i need to do now is actually select it and then apply it to the actual device as such so there's two options there obviously depending on what you've actually added but if we choose that one there it'll send information over to the two wire outdoor and there we go and see that that's all been applied so that's basically the unit set up to talk to each other permission password added to the outdoor station and also a user with a myfair card to gain entry as well already for us to demonstrate which we'll do right now okay so we're now back at our two wire units and you can see i've got them wired up in a basic sort of topology we've got a single outdoor two wire unit connected into this cw3 enclosure two modular units so basic modular setup there with the keypad and the card reader that's going into channel six on the 706 controller which is the designated port for your outdoor unit Remember, you can only connect one outdoor unit to the 706 in channel 6, which has got the higher power output. The other out outputs are designed for indoor stations. So we've got our indoor unit connected to channel 1, and two flashing indicators there represents that they have connected devices are detected. Network cables connected to the controller, but as you've seen earlier, it's like the actual outdoor and indoor station that will appear on the network as separate devices. So we set these two units up to talk to each other earlier on. By pressing the call button, we should achieve a call through like so. Uh, I can kill that there. Uh, we can also call the indoor station from the keypad by using the room number followed by the hash key. So under this occasion it's one plus hash. And that'll again call. And we also programmed a card in earlier when you, I added myself as a user to the system which again will, will self-operate upon reading from the card reader. So that's an automatic way of being able to get into the actual premises or through the door. Another is obviously the password that we that we stored onto the unit as well, which I actually stored as one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a case of pressing the hash button, followed by your password, followed by the hash key again. The door is open. And that's another means of being able to get in or through the door into the premises without actually having to, to call the indoor station and be let in. So on the indoor station we've got some icons, we've got a call log icon there so we can see what calls have come through previously to the actual uh, indoor station there. We've got a messages icon so we can view what messages have been left if nobody was there to answer the actual call. So there's one that was left earlier and we can, you can click on the actual unit and listen to that message from the indoor station. There's also a icon there where you can view snapshots of every caller, every person press the call button takes a snapshot and sends that through to the indoor station. So there's one of myself earlier leaning over when I press the actual call button. So there, there. The actual messages and the snapshots are stored within the actual sort of active memory of the indoor station. If the unit's power cycle, those messages are lost. To preserve any messages and protect against power cycles and power cuts, it's best to use an SD card, which can be installed into that slot there up to 32 gig. And that will obviously being solid state will protect your messages and also your snapshots from from loss accidental loss as such there's also a concierge button there which allows you to press the press and call a, a back end vms hick central live ms4200 you can also receive calls from that vms as well the live view actually allows you to view the main outdoor station camera or any other connected cameras um, by clicking on the unit there and obviously that's as we've seen earlier is for a set duration you can also talk listen and un unlock the door from the screen as well and last but not least, under the settings menu, there's a, like I said earlier, you can set the actual system up from the wizard within this unit. There's a lot of settings here that are available here that we've seen in the 4200, but the, the main one to look at is the Wi-Fi option there. This is a Wi-Fi compatible unit, and we can turn the Wi-Fi on here and select an access point to connect to if you chose to use it through or needed to use it through wireless means as well. So the last thing I'm going to do today for this video is I'm just going to create a very simple backbone. I'm going to add an, an extra DSK AD706 to the unit and I'm going to add an additional indoor station just to give you an idea of how the backbones work. I'm also going to add a DSK AD706S as well which can be used uh, under certain circumstances depending on the 
the cabling or the legacy cable has been used as such. If two-wire legacy cabling is needed to link backbones together, and you can do that using the 706S, which we'll do now. I've now got our basic backbone set up for our two-wire solution. I'll start at the bottom. This is a KAD706S, so this is designed to connect multiple backbones together. It's not designed to connect indoor and outdoor two-wire units to. It looks very similar to the 706, but one distinguishable aspect is it doesn't have an in and out in the top left hand corner. Your DSK D706 will, will have that in and out connection here that allows you to daisy chain, cascade them and create the backbone. So this sits at the bottom of the order if you like and it will allow you to connect up to six backbones into it uh, and then obviously has a network connection which will then allow you to network the full installation or connect to a switch which might have a connection from another 706S from another backbone, another building as such. Depending on the legacy wiring uh, situation it might be that you don't have network possibility for a network connection where this 706S needs to be located but that's not a major problem because you can still connect up to five backbones into it into inputs inputs one to five and then use it connection number six for a two-wire feed back to a central point where you could have another 706S waiting to connect the backbones too and the same goes for another building and at that point you could have your network feed to, which will allow everything to be networked so it all depends on the capabilities of the install and how the legacy cabling was run as such so there we've got obviously a flashing indicator on channel one which shows we've got channel one fed into the input of our first kd706 controller if you're running a a backbone as such cascading these you can cascade up to 15 kd 706s in a single backbone and like i said have up to six backbones in a building with six device connections on each kd 706 there's a lot you know a scope for very large installations up to 500 devices using these products so we go into the input of the first kd 706 you can see there we've got in and out flashing indicator on that unit, on that first unit. We've also got channel one and channel six occupied, which is our two-wire outdoor station and also our first indoor station. We then come out of our first KD706 into the input of the second, and where we've got channel one feeding our second indoor station there. So again, the in and outs are basically to be used and utilized for your cascade, depending on how many 706s you need, up to a maximum of 15. So like I said earlier, you can you can interconnect these backbones through the two-wire feed or through network feed using utilizing network switches as well. So again, more flexibility in how you can connect these units together. So this is our very basic backbone. This unit is still talking to the indoor station like it was earlier on. So what we need to do is we need to set this second indoor station up on the system. Earlier on we used IVMS 4200, but today I'm just going to quickly set this up using the, the onboard, the local wizard on the actual unit itself. So the first thing from scratch we need to do is activate the unit and give it a password which is the same with any high vision device so I'll just quickly put our password in so that's the unit activated this will now take us into the wizard we've got a, first of all our language option which is set to English already so we can bypass that we can put the unit on the network the easiest way is just use DHCP it's a one press function and there you go it's brought an IP address in. So just looking at this, the topology there, it's got a two-wire feed into the first 706, into the second, and then down into the 706S, which then has the network connection. And this has managed to obviously speak straight through the cascade and bring a, a DHCP network address back, which is unique to this particular indoor station. So we've got floor and room number. Obviously, we've already set this one up as room one. So I'm going to set this up to be room number two, just to differentiate it from our first station there, like so, room number two. So we can enter that there, click on next. So now we associate it with the outdoor station. So the two-wire unit there, 8003 IME2, is the unit we want to associate it with. This and the second one down is actually it's an IP modular outdoor station, which it's found on the network, which just to make a point, it will actually associate itself with and actually dock with and so you can actually use the the two-wire indoor units with ip outdoor units it's highly unlikely that scenario would crop up but if it ever did then obviously it's it's a worthy thing to remember so we can obviously select our ime2 which is our indoor station here outdoor station here and finish that so that's that now set up as room number two so what situation we should have here is this unit is room one this unit is room two so if i call room one on the keypad you can see that if our first indoor station is calling, 
Fry ring, room number two. We've now got our second indoor station calling. So in a in a you know large apartment block situation, we've got several rooms. A cascade or backbone with six devices on a controller could potentially cater for a lot of main indoor stations. We all of which can be contacted through this particular keypad module along with the outdoor unit. So one other thing to show is obviously the second indoor station working as a sub indoor station, which is also possible. You can have up to five sub indoor stations working alongside the main indoor unit. So we can do that quickly again from the settings by just re-entering the wizard, which I can quickly show. Just gonna quickly enter the password. So we've got a wizard option there at the bottom, we can go back into that wizard and we can quickly skip the bits that aren't of interest, but they're indoor station type. Indoor station, we click on that, we can call it an indoor station extension. Extension number one to five, like I said, you can have up to five and obviously the room name that you want associated with, which is room one, which is the main indoor station that we programmed up earlier on. So reboot the unit. And when it comes back, we should have the two indoor stations basically working together under the room number one. So I'll just take a, a few seconds for it to reboot. There we go, that unit's reboot. So we should be able to call both stations now. First of all, using the initial call button on the outdoor station. And as you can see, both the units are, are calling. So you can answer or decline from either of the indoor stations. You can also ring both units from the actual room number itself, which is one and hash. And there we go again, the two units ringing together. So if you add, obviously, potentially up to six indoor stations all working under a given room number, all of them can be made to ring. There is some options that can also allow certain indoor stations to sleep as well and only certain ones to be active at different times as well, which is another sort of flexible setting of these units as well, depending on where they're going to be situated. So that's just a, an insight into the two-wire solution, how it can be used and deployed, how you can utilise an existing legacy cable but still achieve a very large network-based solution, intercom solution at the same time. So any potential inquiries or any additional technical questions you might have on this solution, please don't hesitate and get in touch with Dynamic CCV's technical support department. Your sales account manager can help you with any potential complex or large projects that you may benefit from using this particular solution from as well. So that's it for now. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've always got new and useful videos coming all the time on the latest technology, latest products. So please subscribe to keep up to date with that and we'll see you on the next video.